Nebuchadnezzar the Great will be one of the primary figures of the first chapters of the book of Daniel, as his reign is of great significance for prophetic understanding and is a complicated person in the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar reigned in Babylon between 605 to 562 BC and had inherited his throne from his father, Nabu-Pileser, founder of the Chaldean dynasty. Babylon is considered one of the greatest cities in history, and biblically is one of the most significant. The earliest form of Babylon in the Bible is that of the unfinished tower called Babel, which was under the construction of the ruler Nimrod after the flood of Noah in Genesis 11, which was a united attempt by humanity to surpass the restrictions that God has made to man. In biblical end times prophecy, this is represented as the worldwide empire that takes over the earth and is finally defeated at the return of Christ as detailed in the book of Revelation. The Babylonian Empire of the Book of Daniel is known as the Neo-Babylonian Empire, also known as the Chaldean Empire, which started in 620 with Nebuchadnezzar and ended in 539 BC due to being overrun by the Persian Achaemenid Empire, which we will be discussing in this series. Commentators have noted that in Jeremiah 25 verse 1 and verse 9 that the prophet writes that the siege was in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. This is because while Jeremiah is using the Hebrew calendar between Jewish months of Nisan and Tershi, being the equivalent to March and April, commenting on the siege of Jerusalem, Daniel is using a Babylonian Gentile calendar and discusses Jehoiakim's reign since his ascension to the throne. This exile was prophesied by Isaiah as detailed in chapter 39 verses 6 to 7, directed at the king of Judah, Hezekiah, who reigned from 715 to 618 BC, which would be directed at his descendants. We can see that the lineage of these servants was of the king's seed, as detailed in verse 3, which would have been a reference to the line of Hezekiah, prophesied nearly a hundred years earlier. These men were considered of good health and genetic stock, would have been between the ages of 14 to 17, and would have gone through training for three years according to accounts of the shared customs of the Persians. In 2015 in Iraq, the modern name and location for what is ancient Babylon, over a hundred clay tablets no bigger than your average palm size were discovered, which are shown to be from 605 BC. The inscriptions of Judean captives and the rations they were provided shows that they were overall well treated under the orders of Nebuchadnezzar, which provides historical proof for the account of Daniel and provides additional context as we progress throughout the study. Among the new Jewish captives for Babylonia were Daniel, meaning God is my judge, Hananiah, Jehovah is gracious, Michelle, who is like God, and Azariah, Jehovah is my helper, and would have been around the ages of 16 to 18. Captives of Babylon were given new names as a way of stripping one's identity in place of a new one to adapt to their new pagan empire. Daniel was changed to Belteshazzar, which means Bel will protect, which would be associated with Baal. Hananiah to Shadrach, inspiration of the sun, devoted to Babylonian sun worship that goes back to the Tower of Babel. Michelle to Meshach, belonging to Aku, and 
Azariah to Abednego, servant of Nego. In this passage, we see that Daniel is reluctant to eat the portions provided by King Nebuchadnezzar. This would be mainly due to the fact that this would have been sacrificed to Babylonian gods, hence why Daniel would not partake in this consumption. While the provisions would have been great, this would have gone against the Hebrew faith and Mosaic law. In Leviticus 20, we see how God uses distinction for the Jewish people with other nations and kindreds through matters of life such as dietary restrictions. Let's read what God said to the Jewish people. Leviticus 20 verses 24 to 26 But I have said unto you, Ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. The food that Daniel requests, as opposed to the meat of the king's rations, is pulse. As defined in the Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary, pulse is leguminous plants or their seeds. This is more specifically recognized as chickpeas, lentils, dry beans, and other plants that grow in pods. This would have been a better alternative for Daniel and his companions instead of eating meats that would have been sacrificed to Babylonian idols, and God openly blessed them for that. Here we see that God had blessed the four children as they had stood up for the Lord by not compromising to Babylonian customs. And Daniel was specifically blessed with the ability to interpret visions and dreams. We can recall in the Bible where the dreams that were interpreted had prophetic and real-world consequences. Take the example of the account of Joseph as found in Genesis 41, where the king of Egypt had his dream interpreted by the then Hebrew prisoner. In the dream, seven fattened and healthy cows were eaten by seven sickly cows, and then followed seven tall ears of corn being devoured by seven sickly ears of corn. What was to follow was from God, as both the dreams told that there would be seven years of plenty in the land, and immediately following would be seven years of famine. Pharaoh then permitted Joseph as second in command over all Egypt next only to himself. When we read Daniel, take into consideration what happened in Genesis, because we're going to see similar prophecies. 